Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. We begin with some incredibly sad news. A longtime voice in the Detroit sports world has suddenly been silenced. Sportscaster Fred McLeod has died. Freddie, as we knew him around here at Local 4 for so many years, is a huge part of the Local 4 family as an anchor of sports here, also hosting Sports Final Edition every Sunday night. And then he moved on to his dream job of a lifetime, doing play-by-play -play for the NBA with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Steve Gargiola, a longtime friend and, of course, colleague with Freddie for so many years, joins us now to talk more about his life and certainly my condolences to you as a longtime friend. Yeah, it's a tough day, Rhonda. It really caught us all by surprise this morning. In our business, we talk a lot about tragedies that families endure, but there's no denying it hits harder when you lose a friend. I first met Freddie back in the 80s. He was the sports guy at Channel 2. I was the sports guy at Channel 7. Bernie was here. There was always friendly competition, but eventually we all found a longtime home here at Local 4. More than a talented professional, Fred McLeod was a good guy. Fred came to Detroit in the early 80s and soon found a longtime home here at Local 4. Welcome to Sports Final Edition. I'm Fred McLeod. Fred did his tour hosting Sports Final and was a daily part of the Local 4 sports team. So the guys all to a man said they were glad to see Larry Brown, but felt even better about beating him. At the Palace, Fred McLeod, Local 4. He became the play-by-play -play voice of the Pistons on TV in 1984 and called Pistons games for 22 seasons. I'm Fred McLeod saying so long from Arco Arena in Sacramento. But if the love of his life was sports, it was a distant second to his life partner. Hi, I'm Fred McLeod, Cavaliers uh, television voice. Normally Austin Carr is sitting to my left. <laughs> but Fred and his wife Beth, both part of our local four family before moving to Cleveland. In 2006, that's when Fred got the play-by-play -play job on the long-suffering Cavaliers who won their first championship in 2016. Let's just say Freddie was an emotional guy. It's over. Fred McLeod, gone at the age of 67. I remember that video, Freddie was so pumped. Just this summer, Fred called play-by-play -play of the Lions preseason games. The Lions have released a statement saying in part, Fred brought an energy to our broadcast this summer and demonstrated the same passion for our team that he had for Detroit throughout his broadcasting career. The Detroit Pistons also releasing a statement saying in part, serving as Pistons broadcaster from 1984 to 2006, Fred touched the lives of many colleagues, players and fans through his kindness, his enthusiasm for the team, his storytelling and his passion for the game of basketball. And former Cleveland Cavalier forward LeBron James tweeted his condolences. It's extremely sad, sending his prayers to Fred McLeod and his family. Consummate professional, you know, good friend, just an all around good guy. Absolutely. And I see your eyes welling up just yeah. as our mind. I think our hearts are especially with his wife, Beth McLeod. They were yeah, we inseparable. Love just a beautiful, beautiful couple. And our thoughts are with her and his entire family, his three children, and of course the extended sports world that will dearly miss him. Which is a big family for Freddie. It certainly <laughs> is. He's a very special guy. Touched a lot of people. Thank you. We're going to turn our attention to some other news this noon. In Southfield, police are searching for a driver who hit and killed a pedestrian along 10 Mile Road. It happened overnight east of Evergreen near Santa Barbara. Larry Spruill joins us now live with what we've been able to learn and also, Larry, who police are looking for to try and track down who's responsible. Yeah, good afternoon, Rhonda. Now, police say that the hit and run happened right here at this intersection. I talked to neighbors. We're here at Santa Barbara 10 Mile Road. I did speak with neighbors today. They tell me this intersection was blocked for hours. We saw like all the police uh, lines all They had all the yellow caution tape out. We saw the police had blocked everything off. That's the scene Damon Stevens walked by during his Tuesday morning exercise. He says it's a quick one mile walk around the neighborhood. The intersection of 10 Mile Road in Santa Barbara is the halfway point. But Sky Force shows police surrounding that Southfield intersection Tuesday morning for a hit and run accident. Southfield police say it appears someone hit a female when she tried to cross the street here at 10 Mile Road in Santa Barbara around 5 o'clock Tuesday. 
Police say that driver kept going. Now they are searching the area for possible cameras to help them identify the driver. And also police have not identified that victim's name, but I want to show you something. If you can, just take a look at the construction. Neighbors say that this often plays a huge factor with traffic backup. I'm working on that part of the story all new tonight at 5. We're live in Southville this afternoon. Larry Sproul, Local 4. All right, Larry, thank you. Meanwhile, Floyd Galloway, the man charged with killing 28-year-old Danielle Stizlicki, is back in court for the second day of a hearing to determine if this case will go to trial. Danielle Stizlicki was last heard from on December 2nd of 2016, nearly three years ago. She was last seen leaving her job at MetLife in Southfield. She was planning on meeting a friend for dinner afterwards. Stizlicki's friend was worried when she never showed up and went to her apartment complex where Danielle Danielle lived the next day. Sizlicki's Jeep Renegade was found parked just eight feet from her apartment door, her purse still inside the vehicle, and that's when the search for Danielle kicked into high gear on December 19th of 2016. Police announced that Sizlicki was a crime victim, or I should say the victim of a crime. Let's go back to Karen Drew once again this noon in Farmington Hills uh, with a blockbuster development in court this morning as if yesterday wasn't enough. This time around it involves DNA found inside of that suspect's home, Karen. A huge morning, Rhonda, for the prosecution, as you said, blockbuster in some turns when a forensic biologist from Michigan State Police takes the stand and talks about DNA that was obtained from a carpet patch inside Floyd Galloway's master bedroom. It is at least 32 septillion times more likely if the DNA originated from Danielle Sislicki and three unrelated unknown contributors than if the DNA originated from four unrelated unknown contributors. So this provides very strong support that Danielle Sislicki is a contributor to the DNA profile from the carpet swabs. Very strong support that Danielle Sislicki is a contributor to the swab from the carpet. Yes. Again, the highest level of classification that you can give it. Yes. Reason why I included some of that, those terms, the 32 septillion chance showing how likely that DNA was of Danny Stizlicki's found inside Floyd Galloway's master bedroom carpet floor. Also, a detective from Farmington Hills police took the stand and talked about how he obtained Galloway's phone after they started investigating. Take a listen to what he found. Uh, the phone had been reset to its factory settings. Wiped? Yes. His phone had been wiped once police started investigating. Now, most recently, cell phone records have been introduced, and I will tell you, it is a timetable that is very intriguing, noting that Galloway and Sizlicki's phones were at the same place at the same time the evening of December 2nd, except for a time period when Galloway's phone mysteriously shuts off. Of course, the court proceedings just took a quick break. We'll be back this afternoon and provide live reports today at 4, 5, and 6. Until then, we're live in Farmington Hills. Karen Drew, Local 4 Defenders. And Karen, I know that you've had opportunities to speak with Danny's parents many times. After day one of the preliminary hearings and all that was revealed about this timeline and the connections there, is that giving them some relief or hope for justice? I will tell you, um, they want to follow these court rules so carefully, and the judge did say, do not talk to the media, so they mm -hmm. have been very clear in not communicating. But I will tell you, it is a little strange because Ann Stizlicki, the mom and the daughters, they will be subpoenaed to speak. So because under the law they will be, they're not able to sit in the court proceedings, Rhonda. Oh. So they're being brought in, but they're sitting in the hallway wow. as all this information mm. is pouring out. and. No matter who you are and no matter what you believe, you've got to feel for a mother who's trying to find Absolutely. justice for a daughter and she can't even sit in the room. Absolutely, after nearly three years. Well, Karen, thank you and we'll look yeah. for your reports later today. And we do want to get an update from Brandon as he's been preparing us for this summer sizzle today. How far are temperatures climbing? Haven't really reached the entire area yet, but the heat, humidity, and the winds all on the rise. 77, Adrian, Ann Arbor, and at Metro, and you factor in a little humidity, feels a couple of degrees warmer. Already 80s for the heat indices down in Monroe County. But you can see our north zone hasn't quite gotten the warm 
weather letter yet. I haven't opened it. We have uh, temps heading into the middle 80s, feeling like low 90s, and the summer heat brings summer storm threats. You see here a heat index forecast shows upper 80s to low 90s for how it will feel later this afternoon into the early evening. Rain and thunder and lightning coming through uh, the Lansing area, so we'll get some rumbles coming into Genesee County here, maybe clipping northern Livingston County, but we have been placed under a marginal risk for severe weather later this afternoon evening, and Rhonda, I'll have more on that coming up. All right, Brandon, we'll see you here in a few. Meanwhile, a team of medical professionals trade in the cold weather for the hot sun, the unlikely people helping those in Bahamas after Dorian wreaked havoc.